न जानाति तव जननम काल न जानाति तव समापनम दृष्टो मया तव महाकार योगेश्वर काल काल योगेश्वर काल काल नमस्कारम एवरी वन ऑफ यू एंड आई एम एक्सट्रीमली सॉरी दैट आई एम नॉट एबल टू बी फिजिकली देर ड्यू टू सर्टन एंगेजमेंट्स हियर बट माई हार्ट इज वेरी मच विथ यू आई हैव फॉलोड the kashmir situation since mid 70s wow it's uh, one atrocity after another and uh, i have also reasonably acquainted myself with the last 600 to 700 years of history both the glorious aspects of it and the atrocious things that have happened the genocide and pogroms are not just three decades old been happening for six centuries the demographic shift did not happen overnight when that was happening what should have been done for whatever reasons could not be done i am not here to blame anyone nor am i here to say anything insensitive to those of you who already have been peeled of your skin that anything can hurt you you're in that condition i understand i'm my words are absolutely inadequate for the empathy that i feel this was not just done that is the necessary things to shore up a society and to protect things that are valuable to us the people the rulers those who were invested in knowledge and the sacred institutions could not act the world is still in a state that no one can no one can protect and nurture anything that is of value just with scholars sans soldiers This is a mistake that's happened right across Hindustan and the brunt of it has been taken by the Kashmiri people but it's happened all across this land when you have something of value in your home you need a lock you need a guard dog and maybe you need a gun this is an aspect that we as Hindustan neglected with the comfort of geographical protection of the mountains around us we live thinking nobody will ever come and touch us we invested in subtler aspects of life but those who did not understand such things and those who had their own cruel agendas took advantage of us completely i'm saying in many ways not to insult you please this is a case of like spilt milk strengthening the spiritual backbone of bharat which is beyond religious divide and of deep humanism which is what this culture is about and doing whatever else that can be done economically uh, and in terms of restoring some parts of geography at least without putting too many people back to risk once again is an odorous task some efforts are going on i i can understand dr surinder saying what he said because what efforts are going on is not important what results have happened is important results are not much though 370 repealing of 370 was a big step still to manifest it on the ground to make it socially safe for ordinary people to be on the street has not happened yet well the government is trying to encourage people to take jobs 
even the labor who is going from various different states to work there, uh, their lives are not safe. But at the same time, when nearly eighty-five to ninety percent of the population gets involved in something of this nature, very hard for security forces to control this. This needs a political and military solution. Military is out there, nearly close to half a million soldiers out there for many years. But you know the kind of international campaigns and narratives that have been built around you, as you already mentioned. So one important thing that I feel is, we must take charge of the narrative. Well, in recent times, some uh, cinema has been made and, uh, well, it has brought some light to people, those... the generation of people, the next generation beyond me, uh, did not even know that something like this has happened, it's brought forth. But I feel still we have not taken the narrative in our hands. Our time has definitely come where our identities of geography and ethnicity need to be transcended, but not lost. An identity with precious knowledge that we hold is the way forward, because with this identity and this capability, we can be who we are, wherever we are. I am not trying to write off K Kashmir, please do not misunderstand me, because it pains me to see every couple of weeks or three, four weeks, we are seeing uh, two Kashmiri Hindus shot dead here, there. For me, these are not numbers. These are people like you and me. <laughs> two people shot dead, oh, just two. It's not just two, two lives and two families and people connected with them, everything is gone. So one thing, this may look very meager to many of you, but I am thinking of long-term well-being of your community. We need to capture the narrative. Many, many more things have to be done. I think capturing the narrative, how to do it, if you are willing, I am willing to spend a day with you, with a close group of people, how can we capture the narrative? I am saying all across country, you can demand with the central government, as a tragedy that has unfolded in Kashmir, the injustice that has been done to the people, at least to acknowledge that. There must be in every city, at least every major city across the country, there must be a street named after Kashmir, a circle or a square named after Kashmir, or there must be a Kashyapa mountain or a peak. I know these are poor substitutes, but if we want the glorious and atrocious nature of Kashmir history to be remembered, celebrated by all in Bharat, we need to create symbols. Because going back and taking the land straight away, let us be practical about this, because recently I was uh, with someone from your community who holds a very eminent person who holds a significant position. Uh, he was telling me, Sadhguru, once I retire, I'm going back to Srinagar. I said, please don't do that. Because especially someone of your stature, you should not do that, it'll be somebody's pleasure to do something terrible. So we must understand that the essence of all this is there is religious bigotry and bigotry is written into the scriptures and if we do not bring that narrative everywhere, if we do not say that it is this narrative that needs to change, just changing one situation, trying to fix one situation is not going to work because we must understand from Azerbaijan to right up to Cambodia, there was Hindustan. Now it shrunk to this size. And now Kashmir is a problem where they're trying to shrink it further. So this shrinkage didn't happen overnight. The demographic change did not happen overnight. The shift in demographics is the technology. Because 
There are people who are committed for hundred, two hundred, five hundred years, they don't mind if their intentions are fulfilled after five hundred years, they are willing to work for it. That commitment creates many cruel situations, but generally our communities are committed to bringing well-being to people who are living here, not sending them to heaven. So having said that, but if we want this, can everything be corrected? No. Can we bring back the lives, precious lives we've lost? Not at all. But even to get back the geographical entity is very, very difficult. This making Kashmir into a union territory, I think it's a positive step. Fortunately, even the Supreme Court has uh, validated that as a law. And uh, many historical blunders we have done, this is the important thing we need to understand. At a given time, what needs to be done if we don't do it and we try to do it tomorrow, it will be late for us. Mistakes that have been done, we cannot fix the past, but how do we ensure there is a future? We cannot go on being soaked in the pain and suffering of our parents, but to establish a secure and a culturally rich and identity, uh, enjoying the identity of who we are, the future of our children, this is very important. Because I'm not saying you can forget this, I'm not saying uh, some philosophy, don't worry, tomorrow will be okay. I'm not saying those things. All I'm saying is, I'm not a very good... Uh, <laughs> I'm not good at consoling people, but I'm... I've been thinking of solutions, I've spoken to various aspects of the government regarding this. But every... every solution that you think of, it is being beaten down by somebody because they have the narrative in the world. I think shifting the narrative is very important. I know I already mentioned one movie was made, but an hour and a half, two, whatever the length of the movie in a theater is one thing, that's fine. But I feel you need like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes like ad films, taking the sufferings of individual families and highlighting it and melt people's hearts across the world. This is very important. We have come to a place in technology and reach where we don't need a theater to press spread the message. Just about in everybody's phone, everybody's computer, it can be there. I think focusing on shifting the narrative is very important if we want any solutions. I understand you mentioned a timeline, all of us who have seen this suffering, who are witnesses to this, in another twenty, twenty-five years, we may not be there. I deeply uh, feel for this, but changing the narrative and making Kashmir visible all over the country, at least in India, everybody who lives in India must know that this has happened to our people. Without this, if it doesn't live in the minds and hearts of people, well, so many things have happened, absolutely terrible things have happened in this country, it's all gone. It's simply gone, as if it did not happen. The millions who died of famines which were engineered, the millions who were slaughtered, millions who were poisoned, so many things have happened. And thousands and thousands of temples which were demolished, all this forgotten, all right? Because somebody has stolen the narrative. This is a time where we must get the narrative back to truth, we must get the narrative back to to some sense of historical justice, we clearly understand we get, cannot get back anything, everything, we cannot build back everything, we cannot be carrying grudge against people for what their forefathers did, but the narrative must be captured. Without the narrative, we will be a rootless and prideless uh, community, which we must change. So about Kashmiris going back to their land, I know that's the dream. But every few weeks, I'm seeing two dead, five dead. <laughs> we don't want to see that. How to ensure this? Well, it is between military and politics, it needs to happen. Efforts are being made, but even if one person dies, 
we feel the effort is not enough. So many soldiers have laid down their lives, but it's not been enough. One fortunate thing is, in our neighborhood there is chaos, so the amount of support that was coming from there will be receding in the coming years, definitely. That we must make use of and ensure the cross-border support that was happening should be arrested. In arresting this, the internal security could be largely mm, secured to what extent we must see because when ordinary people, people who just regularly walk on the street, who go to the vegetable shop, who sit in tea shops, they have a gun at home and they once in a way, they fulfill what they think is their religious duty or whatever. Ah, uh, it's very hard for any agency to catch all of them. Across the world such movements have happened and they have gone on for decades and centuries uh, because this is a lesson the government of India and every state government in the country and above all the people of India of this great nation Bharat, all of us must learn this, that if we do not attend to a problem in time, tomorrow could be too late. This is the condition where we are in. I know I have not provided any consolation. I am not using sympathetic words, but I am telling you, my heart reverberates with empathy for every one of you. Your suffering is unparalleled in many ways in this country, but similar things have happened everywhere. At least you are at least speaking, others are not even speaking. So many things have happened. But the worst thing about you is it happened now, nearly in twenty-first century. And uh, if you allow it, it'll happen right now in twenty-first century. So, this is the terrible thing in independent India, this happened. I'm... as I said, I have no adequate words either to express my empathy, nor do I have a hotshot solution, just like that, this is it. I don't have either. I only have profound empathy for every one of you. If you have any questions, please. Sadhguru, that was awesome. As you said, we need to create symbols. We need to capture narratives. We cannot fix the past, but we can ensure future. And you also said, that you are going to be available for us to guide us through all this. And we feel blessed to hear it from you. We don't need sympathy, Sadhguru. We need empathy. We need addressal. We are beyond sympathy now. We are doing well, but there are so many of us who are still living in camps, not doing too well, out there on streets, fighting for their right to live. Sadhguru, thank you so much for being here with us and enlightening us with your wisdom. If, if, I, if I can say one word, uh, ma'am. Questions from the audience. If I can say one thing, I, I am very conscious about the situation in the camps. I, I hope Rahul, Rahul Pandita is there among you and uh, <laughs> I've read his writings and stuff. I have spoken to many people, but nothing has happened. But I'm saying, mm, the camp situation, well, the nature of governments, you know how it is. Even if they have the intentions, they have a machinery which rolls extremely slow, not, not at a pace that <laughs> will matter for human well-being, generally it rolls too slow. So having said that, I feel you can definitely, as many of you are entrenched in corporate uh, world, you can recognize uh, a corporation because this camp doesn't take too much. If uh, somebody invests a few crores per year, it could be revived and made into a, a more decent and human habitation could happen in a better way and also employment and stuff can be created. If you identify a corporation, 
I can also speak to some people as a part of their CSR or something, they can take up this camp and revive this. That would be a quicker solution than constantly waiting for the governments to do it. That's exactly what we are asking for. We're not asking for sympathy. We want people to be with us. Uh, Priyatosh ji uh, has a question for you, Sadhguru. Pranam Sadhguru ji. The question I have is related to what everybody knows about, which is we are a rootless community now. Though we have shown resilience over these years, we are doing well, most of us are doing well, but there is a deep-seated despair which continues. Sadhguru, can you please suggest the way forward and how to overcome this trauma? As I said earlier, that our identity, because this is happening everywhere, even if there are no atrocities of this kind, in spite of that, it is happening to all communities around the world. Our identities of geography is being transcended and our identities need to shift to our culture, our spirituality and uh, our the knowledge base that we hold. If we do this, one of the things that we can do is all the Kashmiri uh, Hindu youth can uh, get involved in this. If you want the first one, I will provide you the base and uh, the entire infrastructure that is needed for you. If you want to come and do, let's say, one day Kashmir day in the south, we will provide you everything that you need, present your literature, present your art, music, everything. And let people come to know and also the stories, but let the stories be of the beauty and the power of Kashmiri culture, not just of the terrible things that have happened. That also need to be said, but it's important that people vibe with you for who you are, not for just what happened, uh, what was done by somebody else to you. What you have done with yourself, which is of significance, it's the la land of Kashyap. Kashyapa is one of the seven sages. As you know, we uh, celebrate Adiyogi, and uh, the seven sages and we are doing a process and some research is going on to identify the footprint of seven sages across the world in North Africa, in South America, in Central Asia, Southeast Asia and of course in India. We are making efforts towards that and if you bring the knowledge, uh, the culture, if you cannot bring all of them as one big festival, if you bring literature, we'll provide you a base in southern India, if you bring music, we'll provide you a base or if you come as one cultural fest, it's fine. But I'm sure similar things can be done all over the country to start with and also around the world it can be done. But it's very important that this happens in India, that you present yourself so that the youth will not live in despair. The youth will have something to do and this will also be a very important part of shifting the narrative. Thank you so much, Sadhguru. Yes, that's the kind of help, that's the kind of support we need and need it from you. You being the spiritual guru, we look forward to interact with you personally uh, and uh, get to the real, real, real um, solutions uh, so we go back to our Kasha plan. Thank you so much, Sadhguru. We... As a part of this, as I said, uh... In a time-bound way, if you approach this both in terms of providing a platform in major cities in southern India, we can easily gather five to ten thousand people minimum for you so that Kashmir and the message of Kashmir and the glorious nature of Kashmir and above all, the spiritual knowledge that was held and invested in the people of Kashmir because the future of this world, what I say right now, may not make sense to a lot of people because of the suffering and the kind of power that they are exhibiting right now. But this is something that I have noticed talking to the youth of the world, across the world, in the major universities, in Europe, America and various other countries. What I see is, in another thirty to forty years time, the dogmatic religions will recede significantly. Because anything that doesn't make logical sense in people's heads will slowly recede. Already it's beginning to happen. 
in Europe, in the Western Europe, nearly forty-two percent of the people say they have no religion. In uh, UK, about thirty-six percent of the people are writing in their forms that they have no religion. Thirty-two to thirty-three percent of the people in United States are saying no religion. This is simply because selling tickets to heaven and managing people, those times are over. Unless it makes logical sense, people are not going to ascribe to anything. This number will increase to seventy to eighty percent in twenty-five to thirty years. We can hasten it, we can make sure that happens in next ten, fifteen years' time. Essentially, the entire work that I'm doing is about moving people from religion to responsibility. Spiritual process, which is the basis of who we are, which maybe over a period of time is being presented as a religion, but essentially this is a spiritual process for the inner well-being of the human being, where this is about human liberation. This is not about somebody sitting up there and you're going to go to them. This is about human liberation, this is about a human being earning the grace to function like the divine. This is about becoming the divine, not going to heaven. This aspect of atta attaining liberation to become free from what we are entangled with will become the most important aspect and this will rise in the next ten to fifteen to twenty years time. The sooner we do it, the better it is in that context. You identifying with your knowledge, you identifying with your spirituality in many ways is the ammunition for the future. Not that we are going to fire at somebody, but our way of doing things is to embrace the world, not to destroy the world. Our way of including people, our way of life is inclusion, not conquest. So, identifying yourself with the spiritual nature of Kashmir, the land of Saraswati and Sharada, it is important. That is what should be the basic identity. I'm... I'm saying this with utmost pain, not the mountains and valleys, the knowledge that you carry, because that is the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>